ignition sequence start. July 16, 1969. A massive Saturn V rocket propels astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins into space. Lift off on Apollo 11. For the most daring and technically demanding adventure of its time. Were you nervous? Uh, yes, I get nervous easily, and uh, that seemed like a suitable occasion to be nervous. Once in orbit around the moon, Collins said goodbye to Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin as their landing module headed to the surface. Collins, meanwhile, stayed up in the command module, the only ride home. Once those guys drift off, what are you thinking? Bon voyage. <laughs> Got a fine looking flying machine there, Eagle, despite the fact you're upside down. Orbiting above the lunar surface, Collins was often out of radio contact, though as the command module ventured to the far side of the moon, he did hear this. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. But as for those famous first words? That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. He missed the whole thing. Did you hear Neil Armstrong? No, no. Didn't hear it? No, I don't remember uh, one, one small, small step, step for a man. No, I don't, re don't no. remember hearing that. Collins was flying around the other side of the moon, as alone as any human had ever been. There's more than half of the time you're in uh, contact with Houston. It's blather, blather, blather in your ear. So in a way, it's kind of nice to have that, uh, have that 40 minutes to yourself back there. I kind of enjoyed it. But soon enough, Mission Control caught him up on the history unfolding 60 miles below. I believe they're setting up the flag now. Great. I guess you're about the only person around that doesn't have TV coverage of the scene. That's all right, I don't mind a bit. Nor did Collins mind that he wasn't down there with Armstrong and Aldrin. Was there any part of you that was like, I wish I could have done that too? Well, sure. I wish I could have walked on the moon, but I can say with the utmost honesty, I was thrilled to have the place that I had. To be one third of John F. Kennedy's culminating dream. So I, I have absolutely no beef whatsoever. Kennedy's dream fulfilled with those first steps, but the voyage home was anything but certain. What worried me was the return of coming back. Uh, on the surface of the moon, we just had one ascent engine. The fire had to catch. It had to produce the right thrust in the right direction. If one of those things didn't work right, they, they were dead. The lunar module's rockets did fire, and as it drew closer to the command module, Collins took this picture. He is the only human alive not in the frame. The Earth, three billion of us, plus two. You've got it upside down, I'm sorry. There, does that look better to you now? Huh? Thank you for the correction. <laughs> when we spoke, that view from space was still very much on his mind. That little uh, oar about your window really grabs your attention. It, it seemed to project a little tiny sense of fragility, I don't know why. Just, the word kept, that's fragile little thing. With mission accomplished, the crew of Apollo 11 made it safely back to this fragile place, and a thankful Collins left a message. You see scribbled inside the spacecraft. Yes. Your writing here. Uh, spacecraft 107, alias Apollo 11, alias Columbia. The best ship to come down the line, God bless her, Michael Collins, CMP. I hated to leave it just without saying something to good old 107. I should have put thanks a lot on there. I don't think I put that on, but I should have. And the day that uh, we had that interview, I, we had the good fortune to meet uh, uh, Michael Collins' daughters, Kate and Anne. And yesterday they posted a picture of their parents. Their mother uh, passed away a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, they said this is one of their absolute favorite pictures. Talk about, that's their own amazing love story. Mm -hmm. They had a mixed marriage. He was mm -hmm. Episcopalian and she was Catholic. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it, one of the last things that he tweeted, and yes, he was active on social media, was just a few days ago. 
And that whole idea of looking back at Earth, he says, I'm certain if anyone, if any, everyone could see the Earth floating just outside their windows, every day would be Earth Day. Mm. There you go. Wow. Oh. I certainly wish they taught more in schools what <laughs> Mr. Collins' efforts were on the lunar landing, you know. Yeah. So I'm so glad that you're shining a light on it now, but I wish more kids grew up knowing his efforts. Yeah, everybody wants and, to. Go and, ahead, Aaron. And his, yeah, no, no, and his story is... He came from a military family, he was expected to go to West Point, and his idea that he wanted to fly and not be on the ground was its own sort of amazing, amazing part of his history. And he wrote a book called Carrying the Fire, which is to this day an absolutely terrific read. Yep. Oh, wow. I was just going to bring that up. It's uh, that and American. Yeah, that and American it reads shot. everything. Yeah. Yes, right? Oh, yeah. Harry, Great that was, stuff. That was beautiful. Oh. Thank you so Thank much. You for Thanks, those Harry. Memories. Wow. Yeah. Great. Extraordinary human. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.